Have you ever wondered why the dismissive avoidant attachment cell constantly tries to create emotional distance between themselves and others? Well, in this video, we are going to talk about the biggest reason why at a root subconscious level, and it is called counterdependency. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through what counterdependency really is. We're going to talk about how it impacts relationships, and we're going to talk about a key finding that will help you transform this distancing dynamic within your relationships as a whole. If you are new here, my name is Thais Gibson. I'm the founder of the Personal Development School, and I create daily videos on this channel to help you with reconditioning your subconscious mind, moving from insecure attached to securely attached in the shortest period of time possible. And also we talk a lot about other tips and tools for empowering your personal life and your relationships. So as I mentioned, one of the first things you want to understand first is what counterdependency actually is. In a very simple way of thinking of this, counterdependency is actually rooted in creating constant distancing actions in relationships from other people as a form of rebellion, as a form of trying to retain autonomy and independence, and at its core, because of a fear of connection. And when you look at how this really applies in particular to the dismissive avoidant attachment style, we have to look at why would somebody fear connection, especially when biologically we're wired for connection, we're wired for attachment. And the reason is dismissive avoidance are very much impacted by childhood emotional neglect. And when you grow up in a household or an environment where there is somebody around you who's a caretaker or caregiver, you know, namely your parents, the majority, majority of the time but they are not able to meet your needs. Basically what this causes, because we're wired to rely on our caregivers and get our needs met by our caregivers as children, is this chronic and constant feeling of rejection and a feeling alone. And as a means to adapt to this, if you can get out of a situation where you need somebody from, from when you need something from somebody and instead convince yourself, I don't need something from anybody, in that kind of environment, it gives you relief. So there's actually positively programmed emotional associations to creating distance. It actually felt relieving and the dismissive avoidant because of their environment was conditioned to feel that way. And on top of that, they also gained things from becoming independent and autonomous. There's usually a sense of empowerment that was felt, not just the relief from the rejection and sort of like a soothing feeling, but also the sense of empowerment through that independence, autonomy, freedom seeking. And usually dismissal avoidance became very focused on something or a few things in particular that weren't their human relationships as a means of soothing as well. You know, we talk a lot about on this channel, how often dismissal avoidance will soothe through objects rather than through people, right? So dismissal avoidance may soothe through, um, you know, cleaning their car or, you know, through being very invested in their career or, you know, having sort of hobbies that are non-people oriented that they use as a means of emotionally regulating. And so in particular, what you're going to see is there's almost like three layers. There's, there's this fear of connection. And really it's about fear of rejection and constantly not getting your needs met despite needing to rely on somebody. There's the fear of the helplessness that accompanies that, but the fear of losing the relief and personal autonomy that goes with not needing something from somebody. And then there's this fear of losing connection to the things that you do use to soothe and having to take time away from those very things. And what this creates is this counterdependent behavior, meaning when somebody gets too close, there's this need to emotionally distance and push back to reject those bits for connection as a subconscious strategy to protect these three adaptations. And so what can you actually do, right? What is the actual takeaway here? Well, the first thing I just want to share quickly is that if you are not familiar with codependency and counterdependency, um, you can actually, for free, just for a limited time, check out our reconditioning codependency course. It will help you change your codependent patterns if you have them um, and help you understand that of your loved ones more and know how to respond in a lot more detail. So it's completely free, but just for a limited time, I'll put that link in the description down below. What is something you can start by doing at a high level? Well, it is to ask for compromises and positively reinforce them. So if you are the loved one of a dismissive avoidant, and this is actually exposure work you can practice as a dismissive avoidant yourself, but if you're the loved one of a dismissive avoidant, it can be very valuable to practice just asking for small compromises. And then when a small compromise is made, to say thank you, to acknowledge it, to appreciate it. Because oftentimes what happens is dismissible wouldn't see these small bids for connection or bids for compromise as big things. 
you know, as things that are going to engulf them completely or take away all of their time. And so what it does is it, you know, repeatedly, it's actually a form of um, exposure work, um, also known as exposure therapy, where if you can expose somebody to something in very small incremental doses and then help them build positive emotional associations to them, it rewires how they think or feel about those things. Exposure therapy was actually originally used for overcoming phobias, like fears of spiders. And just to give you a really clear analogy, you might see, for example, that in a therapy session, this is back sort of in the 90s, this was really popular, um, They let's say a client was phobic about a spider or had a spider phobia, you know, you might see one day that literally in the session, the client has a spider in a jar and their goal in that therapy session is to walk up to the room where the doorway is, you know, maybe the spider's on the other side of the room in the jar and just to look at the spider in the jar and just to learn to, to start making positive associations repetitively because it wires them in. So to do things like um, say, okay, I'm still fully safe. I'm I have full power and control over the situation, despite the spider being in the room with me or nearby me. Um, and so you'd have this first exposure session. The next session would be you go in the, the doorway closer to the spider. Same thing, repeat to make positive emotional associations. Third experience. And you would do this over time um, until a lot of this fear was gone. You might get so far as to when the client's ready, take the spider out of the jar and the client, you know, look at the spider that's free outside of the jar. And, and what it would do is it would break down these walls and create new feelings and associations through repetition at the subconscious level um, for the client. So you can actually help <laughs> yourself do this if you're struggling with anything, a big fear that you have, but you can also assist your loved ones in doing this if you see that they basically have a fear of, of making compromises, right? And, and to actually help over time incrementally open that up. So that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this topic. If you want to do a deeper dive, remember you can check out that codependency course with a lot more detailed strategies and other tools to recondition these patterns completely for free, just for a limited time. Use them link down below. And if you have more questions that you want answered or have topics you want to see covered on this channel, please put them in the description box below. I will go back through them and um, really, really appreciate you being here today. And thank you for stopping by.